Brent, thank you. you know, human activity has doubled the amount of reactive nitrogen that cycles through the Earth's ecosystems. And ammonia is important because it's a form of reactive nitrogen that plays a role in a number of environmental impacts. For example, here you can see that when ammonia reacts with urban pollution, it can form particulates that can degrade the visibility and cause respiratory problems. When ammonia falls with precipitation, it can over-fertilize uh, ecosystems that are nitro nitrogen sensitive. That can cause species change and contribute to acidification. Ammonium and nitrate from diverse sources can over-fertilize surface waters also, causing algal blooms and initiating eutrophication of waters. An extreme case of this is uh, the anoxic zone at the, at, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Anywhere from one to two million tons of nitrogen a year mostly from fertilizer, flows down the Mississippi into the Gulf of Mexico where it uh, fertilizes the algae. They die and decay and use up the oxygen in the uh, bottom of the uh, coastal waters of the Gulf. So cattle feed yards are a significant source of ammonia emitted to the atmosphere, but where does that ammonia come from? Well, it's its ultimate source is the air, 70% of, of the atmosphere is nitrogen, and it's converted to uh, ammonium fertilizer, which is used in feed production. Now, in this example, we're going to feed cattle uh, 100 units of a corn-based diet, 100 units of nitrogen, and here are some typical numbers where that nitrogen ends up in the feed yard system. Anywhere from 10 to 15 percent of the nitrogen intake is retained by the animals, but most of the nitrogen is excreted onto the pen surface, either as urea in urine or uh, organic nitrogen forms in the feces. And once it hits the pen, uh, most of most of it, most of the uh, nitrogen in the urine is uh, readily uh, hydrolyzed and then volatilized so that more than 95% of the total lost ammonia comes from pen surfaces. Some of the nitrogen runs off and ends up in the retention ponds, and some is removed during uh, uh, pen cleaning, and where it's stockpiled, composted, or applied to land. Uh, ammonia emissions from, from those sources are, are fairly small. For two years now, we've intensively studied two feed yards, and we've developed the capability to continuously measure ammonia concentration and the other variables that we need to quantify emissions. This is feed yard A, and we measure ammonia emissions uh, using uh, open path lasers, and then we also instrument a meteorological tower with uh, 3D sonic anemometer and, and other instruments that provide us with the uh, measurements we need to quantify emissions. This is feed yard E, and it's uh, similarly instrumented. Our emissions are quantified using what's called an inverse dispersion model. And this is basically a computer program that describes how gases are dispersed and transported in the atmosphere. When we look at uh, the daily ammonia emissions, they follow a, a, a similar a similar uh, pattern uh, during during uh, all seasons. Uh, we have a uh, low nighttime emissions with emissions starting to pick up right around sunrise. Uh, they reach a midday peak and then begin to decline uh, during the day. And that pattern repeats itself during all seasons, the only difference being the magnitude of the uh, daily emissions. We can also look at it on uh, on an annual basis. These are monthly mean 
uh, per head or per capita emission rates uh, in pounds per head per day. Now, the National Research Council recommends uh, optimum crude protein in cattle diets of anywhere from 13 to 14 percent. And at this feed yard, feed yard E, the rations were generally at this guideline during 2007, but they were below the guideline during 2008. And you can see that the emissions followed a, a pattern of uh, greater summer emissions, peaking at a little more than uh, 0.3 pounds per head per day, and lesser uh, winter emissions, uh, peaking at about uh, 0.15 pounds per head per day. Now, feed yard D, excuse me, feed yard A was a little different. Its uh, feeding regime uh, generally exceeded the NRC guidelines, especially in 2008, where in uh, March of 08 they began feeding wet distillers grains, which uh, increased the uh, crude protein in, in diets uh, uh, up to almost 17%. And this increased crude protein had a pronounced effect on ammonia emissions with uh, much greater ammonia emissions observed in 2008 than were observed in 2007. Here's a more detailed look at that effect. For the period uh, March 07 to January 08, the two feed yards had similar crude protein in their diets and mean ammonia emissions for that period were the same. However, for the same 11 months a year later, Feed Yard E, which fed less than 12% crude protein, showed a 20% decrease in its emissions, while at Feed Yard A, which fed more than 15% crude protein, ammonia emissions uh, increased by about 50%. And averaged on a seasonal basis, we can see the same effect. Similar emissions uh, here in the top graph when crude protein was similar, but uh, the following year, uh, from March 08 to uh, January 09, emissions doubled at feed yard A uh, with the increased protein uh, provided by the wet distillers grains. Now, these data were the basis for uh, our recommendations to the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Uh, in order to meet reporting requirements under the Emergency Planning and Community Rights to Know Act. And some of you uh, may be familiar with this worksheet. These were our recommendations right here. Well, what have we learned so far? Well, the patterns of emission that we see across time scales are largely temperature driven so that emissions are least in the winter, averaging any, anywhere from 10 to or 0.1 to 0.2 pounds per head per day, and greatest in summer. Typically, they average about twice, uh, twice the emissions from the winter. Second, the magnitude of emissions will depend on dietary crude protein because any N that's in excess of what cattle need is excreted, and most of that's volatilized and it's lost as ammonia. For example, when crude protein increased from about 14% to 17% at feed yard A, we found that ammonia emissions on an annual basis increased by 45%. And finally, uh, ammonia emissions are a significant loss of nitrogen from feed yards with anywhere from 40 to 60% of fed nitrogen lost. So anything that we can do to prevent ammonia from being volatilized and retain it in the manure will increase the value of manure and benefit the environment. Now later, uh, Dr. Andy Cole will talk about ways to control ammonia emissions and how we can uh, retain uh, nitrogen uh, on the, uh, in the feed yard. Uh, right now, I'm going to pass it to Ken Casey, who's going to talk about uh, hydrogen sulfide emissions. Ken? Uh, 